So let's come through and let's do our design levels. So what our design levels are, is we've got our FFL and our BL. So BL is our bench level. Finished floor level is obviously FFL. There's 200 millimeters difference between them. Okay, so if I look here, 99.93, 99.95, between the finished floor level and the bench level is 200 millimeters. So what you're asking is, well, how do I know that's 200 millimeters? Let's have a look at our cross section. Remember our slab is 100 millimeters usually, and then we have 100 millimeters of blinding sand. So what that means is this point here is our blinding sand. Sorry, our, this point here, the bottom of the blinding sand is our bench level. The top of the slab is our finished floor level with 200 millimeters between them. So that's where those levels come from. So let's delete that, don't need it anymore. So bottom of the sand, top of the slab, 200 between them. That's all you need to know. Now, how do we come up with these? Well, we've got a few different things that we have to worry about. And when we come to these, we need a few more lines in here. So the lines that we need is I need one for the alfresco or the terrace or the veranda or whatever you want to call it at the back of the house here. But I need one here. So that one. The other one that I need is I need my garage. Oh, I can just take from here to here. Just taking the inside of the garage. I'm also going to need my porch. Um, am I happy with that set down there though? Yeah, I think so. That should be okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just select these. So the porch, the garage, and the alfresco. Uh, Copy from a known point. Well, it doesn't really matter which point it is. Let's take it from over here. So this corner here is this corner here. So now what I can do is change these again back to being yellow so they all sit together now I'm not happy with this garage so I'm just going to redo it why am I not happy with it well what's happening is we're setting down areas at the moment so the garage the porch and the alfresco get set down by 50 millimeters compared to the rest of the house so why is that? Well, it's for water mainly, for water, for dust and everything else. So we set them down we go, okay, we'll put a drop in the slab here. So the level will sit below everything else to stop, you know, anything, you know events occurring. So if my garage fills up or with dirt or with whatever, it won't come into the rest of the house. Same reason why we set down our wet areas for our slab and the terrace here so you will step down to the terrace they can be on the same level um, they recess in the sliding doors into the concrete but it's good practice to set this down um, you know, even still if this fills up with water you've created a buffer for it coming into the rest of the house so I need that polyline that I've just drawn let's move it from this point to this point okay so that's a bit better that's my set down there so what this means is I have a few different levels so what I might do is I'm going to delete the roof I don't want it there for now go away and I'm just gonna move this in so you can retype this out um, or I'll give it to you I haven't decided yet it might be nice it might not be 
but what I need is I need three levels. Well, I have one for the house. I'm gonna have one here in the garage. I'm gonna have one back here for the um, alfresco. So I'll probably make these a bit smaller as well, so they fit a bit nicer. So let's just reduce the size of this by 0.8. And same here. Okay, so the level that we're trying to decide on, have a guess, um, it's not the finished floor level. We're trying to determine the bench level. The bench level is the top of the ground. So what will happen is they'll dig the ground out to be that level. So we have to find a good one. We have to find one that minimizes cut and fill. So by cut and fill, what I mean is if I come back here, this is my house. I'm trying to get it level. So any ground I move from here, I put back here. So if this was my 100 mark was here, hopefully you remember that was my 100. If this here is 2.6, whatever it is, 2, 2, six zero so in theory if i move this in by um half of that which was uh one one three zero this line here should be perfect that's our halfway point so any ground i move from this point i put back over here as fill that's what we're looking at Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen that way. We've got numerous things we have to consider. We've got to consider um, how much fill we're using, any more than 200 mil of fill. Our footings have to run 200 mil into natural soil. We have two layers of mesh and we have a thicker slab, 125 mil thick slab. So we've also got to think of the cost of it. You'll learn more about that in your geotechnical class. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the levels. So what I can do is I can look at the front level, I can look at the back level, and I can take a halfway point. But is that true? Is that going to work for our house? Not necessarily. Why is that? Well, the back of our house here, or the back of the block, this here, this could be, you know, six meters below ground or whatever. It doesn't affect the house. Likewise, the front. The front could be whatever elevation or height it doesn't affect the footprint of the house. So what I'm really interested in is the difference within the boundaries of the dwelling that I'm building. So from the front, I have 99.86, 99.91. From the back, 100.27. So what you could do for an initial bench level, you would go, a calculator and you would go um, what was it, 100.27 subtract where's the lowest point is this one here 99.86 divided by 2 plus 99.86 equals so 100.065 is the halfway mark between the elevation difference. But is that true? So halfway of my building is about here, which is slightly higher than that number I've just gotten, the 100.06. 100.06 is somewhere in here. So what that means is effectively my cut line is going to sit through here. So that all in here is higher than this point. Okay, this is 100.065. Here is all higher going by the numbers. Here is all lower. So what's happening? Well, to get to this level, I have to remove the ground from here and I have to add ground into here. Now this here isn't even. I'm removing a lot more earth than what I'm putting in here, which means I'm going to take it back. 
like I'm going to have to take it from site into a dump. So it's going to cost me extra money. What we're trying to do is minimize our cut and fill or maximize how much we're using. So what does that mean? Well, what I remove from the ground, I want to put back somewhere else. Also keeping the levels or the amount of fill in the back of my mind. So this is very much engineering where, you know, th there's many different ways to do the same problem. We have to justify our reasoning. If we come to our client and go, okay, I want to raise the ground by um, 300 millimeters. So bring soil into the site. They're going to go, well, why? That's going to cost me X amount of dollars. It might be $15,000 extra. Why would I do that? What's the reason? If you go, well, that is going to save on whatever down the track. It might save on retaining, could whatever it is. They then do a cost analysis on it and go, okay, is it justifiable? Is it not? So you always have to justify your reasoning. So if this was me designing this, um, which it is because no one else is talking, I would go 98.86, 94. Okay, this is my 100. Okay, 100's in here somewhere. 0.10, is that roughly a middle ground? Or can we go higher, do we have to go lower? Well, if 100.10 is my middle ground through here, what's above it? Well, I'm removing 100 millimeters through here, removing 50 millimeters through here, removing almost 200 millimeters from here. That's 100.10, or am I adding down here? Well, here, I'm adding almost 300. Here, I'm adding a little bit. This is okay. So just trying to work out a good level where if I cut above, can I backfill below? And I think 100.10 is a good level. So I will go 100.10. That's 100.10. So I'm saying the entire house here, the inside, bring it to this level for the bench level. So from the bottom of that blinding sand, then what happens from there is my finished floor level is 200 millimeters above that. So 100.30. And then obviously I keep messing things up and making things very untidy. I don't know what's going on with me today, but we shall get there. Okay. So how does this work? Well, now I also have to look at well, what's that mean for the others? What's it mean for my garage, my fresco and my porch area here? Well, all three of these will be on the same level. So the garage, well, if this is 100.1, uh, this here sits down 50, mil 50 millimeters below it. So it's 100.05 which means my finished floor level is 100.25. Okay, so that's this level here. Now, what's happening? Well, 100.05 looks like I'm adding a lot of fill here. Okay, these levels, the natural ground, is below the level that I'm setting. So I have to put more dirt underneath it. And that's okay, I'm not using 400 mil of fill. So that's okay. Now what happens back here? Well, this is obviously the same level. So because I'm lazy, and can't be bothered retyping it. These levels are going to be the same to here. So from here to here to here, what happens? Well. The level through here is a fair bit higher. Okay, so I'm removing 200 mil or 220 millimeters of ground through here. Is it worth it? Well, I have the option now. I can either make it the same level as the house and recess the door into the slab, or I can leave it like this. It's up to me. It's up to me, it's up to the client. The client will, you know, what will happen if you go to your back backyard or your alfresco, 
you'll find that usually you step down. There's a little ridge here. Um, and same thing everywhere else. So for me, I will keep it like this. I'm happy with it. And these will be my design levels. Now, it might not be the same on this side. Have a look. Well, you've got different levels in here. That's where the garage is sitting. Well, I have different levels. So what I would like you guys to do is I would like you to come up with your design levels for this side. And we'll discuss them on Thursday or tomorrow when I see you. So come up with your three design levels and we will argue and negotiate and see what we've come up with. Um, so please expect that tomorrow when you come into class, I'm going to ask you to write your bench level and f finish floor level on the board and then we'll see who's right and who's wrong. Okay, so what's next? Well, the next thing to do is to put it onto a sheet. So I'll give you this title block. Okay, so you can read through it at your own leisure. But effectively, I will select all of this here. Copy from here. And I'll place it somewhere onto this sheet. So let's place it here for now. What oh, hasn't come with me? This here. It's obviously still locked. So, well, these levels here aren't overly important, but how am I going to fit it onto this sheet? Down a little bit. These here aren't overly important. Okay, these are in the street somewhere. And I can move the name of the road up to here. So they all fit in just what they fit in. And this is how it sits here on the street, sorry, on the sheet. And what am I missing in the front yard? Am I missing anything? Uh, that contour, missing this red one here because it's locked. That's why. What I might do is, uh, sorry guys, delete that. Let's unlock it all in here. Just make sure everything is now unlocked. These here I don't care about. They look like they're the crown of the road. And I'll explain the crown, the water table, curb and gutter and everything on Thursday. You also learn more about that in your water class. So copy this to here. Made it fit a second ago, now it's not, so. so there. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to put on my annotations. So the annotations here um, are a little bit trickier. Well, they're not tricky, it's just a lot of um, typing and writing notes. These are our, I guess, our get out of jail free cards. This is what we do to protect ourselves as designers, we put notes everywhere. Um, just explaining everything that our contractors need to look at. So let's find a bit of text that I can use. If not, I'll just recreate it. Do I have any anywhere? No, okay, let's just recreate it. So text. Let's type our first ones in. Let's just have a look at how big that text is. Not very big. Let's increase the size. I don't know where that number comes from, but how's that looking? That will work. Five, four, six is. It's all in capitals. So let's start with reinforce. This is going to be too big now. Let's try that one. Uh, reinforce concrete paving with F62 fabric. Top for soil class um, H and E 
100 millimeter thick and F52 um, for soil class A, S, and M, 75 millimeter thick. So what's this? Well, this is talking about around the outside of our buildings, which we'll get to when we do our site plans. You have a meter perimeter of impervious material. It's usually it's concrete or pavers to stop the water from coming under the house. So you imagine here, obviously water can land on the side here. It's all ground. If that water comes under our slab. It's going to cause movement to the soil. So any clay will start to shrink or swell. Um, and it starts to move our foundations and crack the house. So we just reinforce the concrete with just a bit of mesh up on top of it. Okay. So, well, what's next? Oh, let's keep typing and we shall find out. So 40 millimeter closed cell, uh, it's polyethylene pipe, I think. Polyethylene lagging shall be So what this is, is as I explained when we did our footings, when um, our trades penetrate the pipes, uh, penetrate, when they penetrate the footings with their pipes, they have to wrap it with a 40 millimeter um, lagging tape. Um, and what that's to do with is to allow movement between the two different materials. So if the concrete moves, shrinks, swells, or whatever, it's not gonna crack the pipes. So we have to allow for that. So that is another note. So all uh, penetrations to our footings should occur at the middle third of the footing depth. Okay, next note. Let's connect sewer drain. So here we are, putting all the pressure onto our contractors again. So here we are going, hey, you guys need to connect the sewer. Um, you need to make sure you've got enough fall. If you're not able to do it, give us a call. We'll come down and give, and give you a hand and tell you guys what to do. So our uh, next note, well, let's keep going. So this one here is an important note. So what I might do here, is underline it. So what's the important note? Well, the side of porch roof. Okay, we'll change the text after. So all this is saying is, hey, we know we've got a roof here for the porch. We've got a roof for the main roof. 
So they're going to connect somehow. So where they meet, make sure you provide some good flashings. So where the joint is, I'll show you the flashings when I see you. We can Google them and um, go for it. It's for waterproofing. Okay, so let's put the flashing on there, connect them together, and make sure the water isn't going to sit on the roof and pull. It's going to move. It's going to keep flowing down the roof. So what you'll find is usually you won't keep rewriting these. So you'll do them once and then you just copy them from drawing to drawing to drawing, which makes our life so much easier. But for now, we're just going to type them out because we need to create them first. So what's next? Well, we need to discharge stormwater to street water table. requirements so what this is saying is hey we're discharging some water it's coming out to the street the council will say hey you can't just flood the street and have all the water running you might have to retain it so drip feed it out you might have to slow it down whatever it is it's up to the um, contractor to go through it, but we can advise on it as well. You'd have to read through the council requirements depending where the house is located to get that information. Very important note. So what we've got is we've got die before you dig. That will come through, work out if you've got any gas lines, Telstra, um, cables or anything else running through your block it's up to the contractor to come find them before they start constructing okay what else have we got well we've got a few more notes we've got to put on here Sorry, I lost my train of thought. We're providing we're going a concrete strip upstand. That's what it is. So all this is here is obviously I can't spell. Is that how you spell neighboring? I think it is. Um, what this is here is saying, hey, we've, okay, maybe it's not. Wow, my spelling is really not good. So what it's saying is, hey, we sometimes don't have to put retaining walls in. But we've got less than 200 millimeters of difference between us and the neighbor. Under the fence, we'll have a concrete upstand. So it's just a strip of concrete running that the fence gets stuck onto, and we have to reinforce it. So we just put two inch holes top and bottom with some very small ligatures running up it to retain the soil. So it's not a huge retaining wall, but we still have to do it for any loose ground. So these are all of our, I guess, our main notes. Everything else is now really defined based on where they are. So let's tidy these up. So this one here can sit like that. Same with this one. That one's okay, I think these are okay. This one here doesn't need to be like that either. Now, yeah, because these are notes, let's draw some boxes around them.
Oh, not there. To here. All right, so a few more notes we have to put on here. Actually, very important as well is, did I get a northing on this drawing? I didn't. I'll just take this one for now. Usually we have to show the approximate north on here. So let's just assume it's this one going there. Let's move it down actually, let's bring it down here. See, northing's always shown somewhere on the drawings. I'll do it on one side for the notes and you have to repeat it on this side. The other things that we're gonna to have to do, is if I copy this one, I have one here, one here. You also have another one here, as well as one up here. Well, what's gonna be here? What are we gonna have? Well, we're going to have this. Uh, this is about the driveway, so we're gonna have driveway and crossover. Council specifications. Real estate existing. This one here, um, actually I'll draw a leader, multi-leader. So it's gonna come from here to here. I won't worry about the text. I will worry about the properties. Why is this not getting any bigger? Changing, it's quite annoying. Oh, now it did. Of course, it did after I changed it. Okay, so obviously, we have a driveway sitting in here. So the other thing we might have to do is draw some lines or some leaders through here. Change the property of this to be. Um, 50, that's not going to be big enough, uh, 200, that's okay. Stretch this here out a little bit. All I'm doing here is I'm going to illustrate the fall of the driveway. So just drawing in these lines or these arrows here to show hey the, the driveway falls downwards. Sometimes council can be a bit picky. So we just make sure that we keep them happy. A few a few little arrows. Um, we can actually rotate this one a bit nicer. There. So hey, the driveway, it's falling this way. It's all good. I've also just noticed I'm missing the water meter and the gas meter. Which maybe I deleted them. Okay. Don't know what I've done there. Anyway, sorry guys. Alright, uh, what's next? A couple more things and then we are done. So that will sit there. This one here is, well, this is actually just the same note. We've got this one before. So I can copy this. Copy this to here. I can copy this leader to there. So this is where it's discharging from. 
I've got one more um, note to put on uh, onto these drawings, or two more notes I have to put onto here. I've got this one up here, which is my denotes thousand liter uh, retention tank, which is connected to the toilet, so the water closet WC as per the government specification. Now that is this tank here. There, and then drop a nice box around it all. And then you can also put on your multi liters, you know, to the tank. So you've got one here, you have to add another one here. Um, and last but not least, we have these. So I'm gonna put that one here. Got some text, let's take this one. Almost done, sorry guys, I know this is a very long video, um, or a very long couple of them, um, but these, uh, you know, has to be done. So it denotes, what does this denote? Well, this is 150, um, it's a millimeter diameter. So hopefully I have a diameter symbol, diameter, um, open, whatever, so. Tie it all up. Okay, so that's this all done on the plans. You guys need to do this side as well. Um, but that's how we do our site drainage. So thanks guys. I will, um, yeah, the next video will be on the site um, site plans. So please make sure you're familiar um, with how to do these. Make sure you've written down all the notes. Like I said, Thursday or tomorrow, we'll go through the levels you've gotten for this side. And please make sure you also understand the annotations that I've gone through uh, for all of the levels and the different letters and what they mean. They will show up in your exam. So this is our final um, site drainage layout here. Um, these will come through towards our um, planning approval. So one very important thing that usually we stamp on, or we stamp on all of our drawings, depending for planning, they have to be there. For construction, obviously it's not. But there you go. Um, planning only, not for construction. These ones here, usually we stamp in red. We make slightly bigger. So it's basically going to probably be able to scale it up. And we make sure that we stamp them. So make it look like it's an actual stamp. So draw a nice box around it. Offset by say 50. Hope that's enough. Just put a few of them on there. So this is our get out of jail free card. This is, hey, we told you do not construct with these plans. So we have to stamp it on there. Okay, so if they do anything, like if your trades come in and start building, and you've got this on there, you know, we've told you these are only for planning, you're not supposed to build with them, these aren't final. So this is it, this is your site drainage done. Um, please make sure you, you do finish it all. Um, this will appear 
in your assignment as well. Thanks guys.